Okay, how's everybody doing this evening? My name is Kent, the channel is Zios San Diego. We are the home of the challenge application. If you haven't played challenge, please go to the Google Play Store or the Apple Android Store, Apple Android. I always say it every single freaking time. The Apple App Store, the Apple App Store. Go to the Apple App Store, go to the Google Play Store. You can download the challenge application. It's running on the blockchain. Uh, very easy to use, very intuitive. Uh, it's transparent. You can see the transactions on the blockchain once you uh, once you perform a transaction. So if you, you don't understand how blockchain works, this is a great way of trying to figure it out, right? Having a way to figure it out uh, because you get some challenge tokens for just signing up. And then once you do sign up, you can do a transaction. And then you can go to the Block Explorer and track that transaction or see the transaction on the blockchain. Very easy to do, uh, very fun to do. And of course, it's a geolocation challenge incentivized with tokens so it's easy to get tokens back and forth from people to people from people so anyway it's a very it's a very interesting uh, application and it's one of the few running on the blockchain so uh, take advantage of the opportunity free tokens and, uh, and see something running on a blockchain uh, being run today so many things didn't get built in the 2017 era the ICOs so many things are talked about speculated on but they never get built we actually built this so it's up and running so take a take a look at it and have some fun with it um, I want to talk a little bit tonight about Dan Larimer's tweet. I think he wrote an article on, on Medium about this too, about um, staking pools, staking tokens in order to choose block producers. The governance issue that's been ongoing with EOS for some time. Of course, this is really the heart and soul of the EOS blockchain is how block producers are, are selected, how block producers are incentivized and block producers that make the blocks that actually make up the blockchain. You have two ways of doing this. You can do this through mining, as is done with uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin, or you can have a proof of stake, which is done with EOS. EOS is a much faster scalable blockchain because the block producers are already pre, uh, they are selected already, they're pre-selected. You don't have a competition to build the, to build a block, as with uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin. and and. This is very important because there's going to be just a few of these blockchains survive. The th there's almost everybody I listen to ends up talking about how in the future, uh, as in all things, there's only going to be a select few that end up making it. There's going to be a lot of blockchains, but only a few are going to end up running uh, the blockchains that run the world. And so I believe right now three ha are in um, major forefront as far as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and EOS, simply because these are the three that the Security Exchange Commission have decided are not securities. All three have very significant communities revolving around them, and all three have a significant amount of money to work with. Uh, EOS and Bitcoin has more than probably, actually EOS probably has more than Bitcoin and Ethereum, but they have significant amounts of uh, followings, communities. So these are the three blockchains that are going to run the world, in my opinion and maybe somebody else in the future. I don't know, we don't know about Libra. We don't even know how Libra is going to be, as far as I know, we don't even know how it's going to be, uh, how, the, how the block producers or how it's going to be. I think the, in Libra, the block producers are just going to be pre-selected. I don't even know if there's going to be, how they're going to be rewarded or how that's going to happen. I can't remember, maybe I wrote it, read it, but I can't remember. So we don't even know how these are going to be done, but we do know how, how EOS works. We know how Bitcoin works, we know how Ethereum works. So. EOS has always had a problem with this because there's been a lot of, um, what would you say, a lot of conversation about how block producers are selected. Uh, and it's changed a little bit over time. Governance has changed a little bit over time. So uh, there's been a, some, uh, some, some community issues going on here with the block producers. But Dan Larimer, uh, being Dan Larimer, and of course he made a tweet here some time ago, that he and Brand Brendan Bloomer had come up with a solution for governance, and uh, a lot of people have been waiting on the solution, and of course we think this is the solution that he's talking about, and it simply is staking, which is staking pools. So Dan has come up with the idea that you need to have skin in the game. If you own tokens, uh, the longer you're willing to stake your tokens, staking means literally shelving your tokens. So you stake your tokens. When you stake your tokens, you can stake them for a period of time. I think it's three months, six months, uh, one year, three years, five years, and 10 years. So if you want to stake your tokens for 10 years, 
which means lock them up for 10 years, you can't use them, can't sell them, uh, you can't lease them. Uh, they're pretty much tied up, but you can use them to vote with. And of course, if you stake them for that period of time, your vote has a significant more weight than if you stake them for a shorter period of time, which is three months. Now, this is a very good thing, in my opinion, because it, it, it makes it so um, mainly that uh, people that are custodials of your EOS can't use that EOS to vote with. So if you're an exchange and you're holding EOS for your for the people that are buying on your exchange or bought on your exchange, you can't use that now to vote with, which is what's going on right now. Most of the uh, block producers are exchanges. So an exchange holds EOS for their clients that have uh, purchased it and they use those those uh, those uh, those tokens that are entrusted to them to vote with and create, make block producers or be able to be block producers and get rewards. This new way of doing it will eliminate that because they can't, they're not going to be able to stake those tokens for 10 years because it's not their tokens. So if somebody wants to sell those tokens, um, they're going to have to have, they're have, going to have to be more liquid than that. You can't just decide, I'm going to lock some tokens up and uh, vote for a block producer for uh, 10 years. And then if somebody comes and wants to sell us tokens, you, you have them locked up and you can't do anything about it. So that, that'll eliminate that problem. And I think this is a very, very good way of doing that. Uh, the second thing Dan has proposed is the fact it's going to have one vote for one block producer, which means you can't have one block producer or one vote selecting 30 different accounts or 30 different producers, which is a problem because you got people that are able to kind of give uh, quid pro quo, quo. So you're able to, with your 30 votes, be able to select two or three different producers and and be able to, uh, multiple producers for one vote. Well, and I always thought that was a problem, but I think that this is kind of a one vote, one, uh, one block producer is a good idea. In fact, I think that's been floated quite a few times and always gets a lot of, of all the things like the referendum people usually are in favor of. One of them is one block, one, one vote, one block producer instead of one blo uh, vote, 30 block producers. So that's another thing. So it's uh, mining pools, not money pools, I'm sorry, staking pools, um, being able to have one vote per, per, uh, per block producer, and then uh, the rewards are gonna be cut too from, I believe it's 1% is gonna cut back to half a percent, uh, which is probably not a bad idea. I think a lot of people I was reading on the US proxy telegram tonight are complaining about that, but, uh, that that may be uh, the way it all works out because you're not going to have you're only going to have 21 block producers you're not going to have the standbys like we have now so there'll just be 21 block producers and that will be it there'll be no standbys so you're going to have a half a percent going to the block producers and i believe three percent go to the staking pool so you got three percent going to the staking pool half a percent going to the block producers that's three and a half percent so you will earn a reward or earn some interest on the tokens that you stake in these in these pools in these uh, staking pools so you can decide based on what length of time you want to lock up your tokens and then you are giving an ability to vote for a block producer of course the more time you decide to stake the, the more weight your vote has and I think this will put the uh, uh, the ability to uh, produce or, or get somebody that's a, a good block producer I think this is a better way of doing it because, um, like Dan says, it's skin in the game. Those people that are willing to invest in long term by holding their tokens for long periods of time, they're going to be the people that direct this this, this blockchain. And I think that's a good way of doing it. It's a better way of doing it than I think the way it's being done now. So this is being floated by Dan right now. Hopefully, uh, I think it's got a good chance of people liking it. I see a lot of people on, on a medium are giving it a clap. Uh, so they're giving it a thumbs up. They're giving it a, some applause. So I think this is a good way of going. Uh, I hope a lot of the block producers that are got knocked out of the top 21 here recently will like this idea. It might give them an opportunity to get back in the top 21. Uh, we'll just see how this works out. Uh, the other thing I think is very important, I haven't really re read this much about this new planned idea, is the fact that staking tokens should inc improve price. If you've got people that are staking tokens for 10 years in order to... Uh, to get somebody to be block producer, those tokens are, are tied up and off market. So they're not in the market. So you take uh, tokens that are in uh, 
a, a, a staking pool for 10 years or even five years or even three years, that's a long time that takes them off the market, out of the market. They can't be sold, they can't be liquidated, they can't be used to drive down the market, they can't be used to manipulate the market. So this is a really good idea from the point that you're not gonna get these manipulations like you have in the past where people that hold a lot of tokens, maybe uh, uh, maybe uh, exchanges that could sell, sell and buy and, and fluctuate the price. If they, uh, if they put their tokens, if the tokens get put in these uh, staking pools, they're gonna be out of the market. So it's gonna help the market. It's gonna be less float, less, less uh, available EOS to buy and sell uh, on the open exchange, on the open markets without any, uh, without any uh, restrictions. So this is gonna be a good thing for price. I think it's gonna improve price. So I think there's a number of things that are very, uh, are very good about this. Uh, the fact that people are gonna to have to put a, a long-term um, decision, a long-term investment into voting for somebody uh, and it will uh, help the price uh, price quite a bit, and it will also keep the exchanges from manipulating price and keep the exchanges from uh, uh, being uh, self-rewarding by giving themselves the opportunity to use other people's uh, uh, tokens to, to uh, create rewards for themselves. Um, not that I'm against that, because I do like the uh, I do like the the, uh, uh, the exchanges. You know, they they obviously trade tokens, and we got a token out there in an exchanges, so I'm not 100% against exchanges being block producers, but I just think that if they're gonna do it, uh, they're gonna to have to do it with tokens that they're willing to set aside for a while. Uh, that's That would be a more fair way for them to have to do it. So I think this overall is a very good idea. I hope it gets a lot of support. I certainly will support it, and I'm trying to support it by telling you about it tonight. I don't know, I just got through reading the article and I haven't had really time to digest it and think about it, so I hope I'm giving you proper information but I think yeah, it's a good idea, um, and I think it definitely is something that will be an advantage or uh, an advancement for the U.S. blockchain. That's one thing I like about it, the blockchains, is people are able to get their minds together and think about ways of doing it better. And as you progress and move forward, it's going to get better and better and better and better. And I think when you have uh, uh, minds like Dan Larimer's involved with these uh, blockchains, you're going to get some pretty good decisions, and I think this is a very good decision. Um, and I think it will help price. And that's, of course, what I'm all about, too, is price. So I'll put the Medium post down on below if you want to read it. Um, see if there's anything else I want to talk about as far as this is concerned. Um, let this guy get out of here with his pickup. He's got some mufflers on it. It's pretty loud. So, um, yeah, it's basically uh, locking up tokens for a period of time, putting some skin in the game in order to vote for block producers. Uh, so you're, uh, you're rewarded for uh, your investment and the length of time that you want to lock up tokens. So, and in, you know, for me, I've never really liked locking up tokens very much. Oh, the other thing I was going to mention about this is the REX, the REX, the resource exchange. So if it's in uh, these, these staking pools, it won't be in REX. So um, uh, you won't be able to use your tokens for resources. So that's going to take them out of the wrecks because they're going to have to be staked by for, for voting and voting alone. So I think that's another good idea. Uh, uh, I think I think to keep them separated between the Rex resource exchange and also between voting. So you make a decision what you want to do with those tokens, either go one way or the other. So a lot of, a lot of information here that I've talked about. And I will be talking about this probably again tomorrow night because I want to read some more information about it and come up with some more more things to say about it because I think this is a big, 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 big deal. Just like the Security Exchange Commission decision was a big deal, I think this is a big deal too. And I think it's going to really help the blockchain and I think it's really, really going to help EOS and I think it's going to make it more legitimate and make the idea of the uh, the way EOS is operated through the, the uh, um, through uh, um, uh, Oh, was it? I'm just trying to say uh, through uh, through staking and also through owning the token to make sure that the proper people are making the blocks. I think that's a good way of going. It's a good idea, and I think this is the way that the best way to implement uh, that uh, that ability to do so. So anyway, I'll put this uh, information below. Please read it because I think it's very important. If you're interested in EOS, this will be a good idea to try to understand this. I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much.